Hi everybody, uh, this is Haley Rogers, the artist behind Found in Fire Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you a time lapse of the making of this little Yorkie. I was very excited to get to do a Yorkie. I grew up with Yorkies as pets, so uh, this was going to be really fun. I start out with an aluminum foil wad. I squish up aluminum foil and make it as compact as possible. Uh, that way there's no bubbles under the clay that can totally ruin a sculpture if you don't get enough air out. And then I condition the clay using my pasta machine and wrap it up around the foil. And after that, that's when I start to add the legs and head and everything else. Uh, I usually shape those before I attach them. And then uh, you can kind of see me doing that. I smear the clay in together to make sure it's a nice secure connection. I wouldn't want a leg falling off, um, and especially with the ears. The ears are one of the most delicate parts. Usually if something has broken, it would be an ear. So I try to make those nice and durable. You can see I'm starting to texture here. Uh, I use these silicone tipped tools. And they're amazing. Uh, for the longest time, I only used my fingernails and uh, sewing pins. And when I discovered these bad boys, it changed my world. If you like to sculpt or even, you know, do other types of clay work, I strongly suggest you get some silicone tip tools. They can even uh, really easily rub away fingerprints and stuff. But I primarily use them for texturing. Um, they do great fur work. I've got three different sizes and the tiniest little black one uh, is for the best detail. I focus on the face a lot more than anywhere else. It really is the focal point of any sculpture, of course. So I try to put as much detail as I can in there, even though bumps on the nose like dogs have. You can see I use my fingernails to make little notches in the ear for the tufts of fur coming out. I use my fingernails a lot. I know a lot of polymer clay artists keep their fingernails really, really short to avoid making uh, fingernail marks, but I have just always had long fingernails, and so I just have, growing up, I would play with clay. It just became another tool to me. I promise they're clean. Your sculpture isn't going to have any dirt from under my nails stuck in it. And here's some more texturing. Uh, I know it's kind of hard to see. Uh, I plan on switching from black clay to maybe a beige or a gray to make it a little bit easier to see on camera. Um, black is just the color I've always used to make the shadows really stick, I guess. I don't have to paint the shadows in as much if it starts on black. It's easier to add highlights to. It really makes it just pop easier. So uh, when I make that shift, it's going to be a little, a little bit of a change for me. But I'm, I'm really not happy with how little the black shows up on camera. Here's some more texturing. Do 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 do. Texturing the fur uh, for a long-haired animal is a lot more fun than doing it on a short-haired because you can really get some movement in there. It has all these tufts and uh, fur goes in different directions and has some body to it, um, but it also takes a whole lot more time than a short-haired breed. That's why it usually... Uh, cost extra, but it's totally worth it.
I'm a big fan of anatomy. Um, I study the bone and muscle underneath, and that's kind of how I build my sculpture up. Just visualizing that, what muscles are underneath the fur. And I use the ball tip tool a lot to accentuate that. Looking at it from that perspective really gives me an appreciation for uh, our creator. It's difficult for me to sculpt this complex little dog. How much more difficult and complex is the real thing? Adding the texture to the ears is probably the hardest part because you push one way and then you have to go back and push the other way without ruining the texture on the front or back. Now it goes in the oven. I do put my sculptures in for at least an hour and a half. That way the clay is fully cured any less than that and it can break and I uh, pride myself on having uh, very durable sculptures. I use a very durable clay but it's still not going to hold up if I don't bake it properly. So I highly encourage you to bake it longer than what the manufacturer suggests. This is uh, my favorite part I guess. I mean I love sculpting but painting is when I get to see it really come to life. I'm not a master painter by any means but um, having a three-dimensional object takes some of the guesswork out of it. I'm just using acrylic paint. I plan on shifting entirely to Genesis heat set paints later on down the road. Um, I've been messing with those since uh, October of last year when I went to a retreat for that and they're amazing um, It's from what I understand a polymer base unlike the acrylic so it literally bonds to the clay If you really wanted to scratch the acrylic off uh, It would come off You can see I'm starting with uh, a, a thinner coat of browns this is, uh, I guess, underpainting. After I get the base colors down, I usually go in with a wash to blend the different patches of color and I'll even take my finger and just smear it and smudge it a little bit. Like I said before, uh, having a three-dimensional object really does take some of the guesswork out. There's already naturally shadows on the object. But when I go in with darker colors, I always do accentuate the corners and crevices of it just to add that extra depth. And of course, I have to dry brush. I dry brush everything. Dry brushing is a really easy way to just bring the texture out. I'm adding some more highlights to the little blonde tuft on top of the head. I think I lightened up the back a little too much, so I'm going back over it with some the darker wash. Uh, don't ever be afraid to cover up something that you're not happy with. I know it feels like uh, I've just wasted time, and but usually it's worth it. Oh, more 
more dry brushing. Look at that. Now I'm bringing out some of the silvery highlights to the back. And that really brings it to life some. And I use these teeny tiny paint brushes uh, to do the eyes and nose. I really try to take care of these tiny brushes because I need every hair to be in place. If one little hair is out of whack, then it could ruin the whole eyeball. I really try to steady my hand for this part, because it's got to be just right. I'm sure I'm not the only one who starts a project. It doesn't look perfect, and then I want to give up halfway through. So when I persevere and actually complete it, getting to admire the finished product is a reward in and of itself. And there's the final product. A completed sculpture, ready to go to its new owner. And thank you guys for watching.